McKenna and welcome to this month's installment of the Jewish Cooking Connection sponsored by the Jewish Federation of the Greater San Gabriel and Pomona Valleys and the Cultural Arts Department there. Today we're going to be making apple honey kala. Now we're getting into the Jewish New Year season and Rosh Hashanah, the typical foods that you eat are apples and honey to wish everyone that you know in your family a sweet year. So this is a nice, fun little take on challah that's totally appropriate and yummy for this particular time of year. So our ingredients are five to seven cups of flour. I measure seven because this is a kind of a touchy-feely recipe. So the amount of flour that you use is not going to be precise and it may change from each time you do the recipe to the next time you do the recipe. Then we've got um, one packet of active dry yeast, or one quarter ounce, a teaspoon of sugar, uh, one large egg and three egg yolks, which I put together, three quarters of a cup honey, two tablespoons canola oil, two teaspoons salt, and uh, two teaspoons vanilla. That is our basic dough recipe. So for the uh, apples that we're going to put in the strands of challah, oh yeah, I didn't tell you about that part, did I? That's gonna be the fun part later on. Um, you're gonna need three Granny Smith apples, chopped small, a half a cup of sugar, and if you wanna mix some cinnamon with the sugar, you can. Again, we'll do that later. And then an egg wash, and if you want to use some turbinado sugar as a, kind of a sprinkling on top of it before it goes in the oven, you can do that. So let's get started. The first step in our bread making process is to activate the yeast. In order to do that, you take a quarter cup of lukewarm water at 110 degrees. Now, probably like a lot of you, I started bread making during COVID. And one of the things that I learned is that if you don't have the water temperature at or as close to 110 degrees, if it's too cold, it's not gonna activate the yeast. If it's too hot, it will kill the yeast. So I use my handy dandy little thermometer to make sure that the water that I have, the temperature of the water that I use is 110 degrees. So you mix that with um, a teaspoon of sugar and your packet of yeast and whisk it up and then you wait 10 minutes. So by the miracle of time-lapse photography, our 10 minutes has gone by and the yeast is activated. And when it's activated, it should look frothy and um, it should have grown or expanded. If it hasn't after 10 minutes, that means your yeast is too old. So you need to get some more yeast. So after the yeast has expanded and you've activated the yeast, then you add an additional one and a quarter cup of water. And then what I like to do is I like to mix that up a little bit. And then you add the rest of your ingredients for the dough. So the way I like to do this, and you don't have to do this, you can add one ingredient at a time, but I kind of like to, to take the honey and remember, this is three quarters of a cup of honey. And then take your salt, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of vanilla, your two tablespoons of canola oil, and then your three egg yolks and one entire egg. And just put this together in a giant measuring cup. And the reason why I do that is I like to have these ingredients pre-mixed before it goes into the uh, mixture of your um, water, your water and your um, yeast and your sugar. So this hala is gonna be a very different kind of hala only because the strands that you're going to be braiding are going to have um, an apple filling. So it makes it a little bit more challenging, but it makes it really good because if you don't tell anybody that there's apple in the strands, when you cut open the challah and they bite into it, there's gonna be this yummy, delicious surprise. 
So now that these ingredients are mixed, what I do is I add it to our mixture like that. Then you take your spoon and um, can mix, or better yet, whisk. And I like to use a rubber whisk um, when I'm working with yeast. So you just whisk all of these ingredients together. And then comes the fun part. Now we get to start making our dough. Um, adding the flour, and you add the flour, it says by half cupfuls. So when you first start adding the flour, it looks incredibly soupy, but what I like to do is as I add the flour, make sure that all the flour is moistened before I add the next half cupful. And I learned to bake from my grandmother. She, on the other side of my family, uh, my grandmother is, was German and Swiss, so she was very precise in her baking. She actually went to college, the Ohio Mechanics Institute, and took uh, home economics there, at least that's what they called it in the uh, teens, like 1919, I think, 1918. But um, in any event, I, she's very she was very methodical, and I learned how to cook from her. So I tend to be maybe a little bit more methodical than some people are. So it takes a while for you to blend the flour. And what's gonna happen with this is that as you're adding the flour, the mixture is gonna thicken, obviously. And when it gets to a specific consistency, you can start kneading this with your hands. It needs just a little bit more flour. And I'm gonna mix this part in the bowl. Like I said, the fun part. So I'm gonna mix this in the bowl and I'm just gonna incorporate the flour that way because I can get an idea of um, the consistency of the dough. So what we're looking for in our completed, uh, when everything's already incorporated, what we want to have is dough that's pliable, dough that's soft, but not sticky. Clearly, this is sticky. So, just add some more flour. And again, you wanna add like half cupfuls at a time. You don't wanna to get too much flour into your dough, but you do want it to be nice and pliable. Maybe even the star of the show. So, this is my dough. And you see it's starting to be soft and pliable and not sticky as soon as I get the sticky stuff off of my hands. And we just kind of knead it a little bit. Need just a skosh more flour because it's still a little sticky. So now that our dough is pretty soft and pliable, still a little sticky over here though, um, what we're going to do is just incorporate a little more flour into our little sticky part. What we're going to do is take a bowl that has been lightly greased with some oil, and I just put the oil on a, you could spray it with pan if you want, or whatever. I just, old school, just put some oil on a, on a paper towel. And then you put your loaf in here, and you turn it over. And then you take a damp towel and put it over your bread. So what I'm gonna do is I put it in the oven, but the oven is not turned on. That's incredibly important. But you see this pan of water behind me? This water goes into the oven along with the bread in order to create humidity and good conditions for the bread to rise. So that goes in there for an hour for its first rise. After it's risen, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in the oven 
the cold oven with your saucepan of water, saucepan of boiling water. Um, you're gonna take it out after an hour, punch it down, put the dough back in the oven, cover it with your damp, uh, damp cloth for another hour. This dough has had a head start. It's actually on its second rise already. We're done with the second rise. So we're gonna punch it down a little bit more because we wanna get rid of whatever uh, air bubbles that are in there. Now comes the fun part. Uh, when you take the dough out of the oven, after the second rise, it should have been doubled in size. And it says if it's not doubled in size, then you can just keep it and let it rise for a little bit longer. This is pretty much double the size as um, I put it in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, yet again, dust our surface. And take our dough out of, he got a little sticky, out of the uh, bowl. and um, knead it again. So again, you're kneading it, and this is where your bread maker's intuition comes into play. You add a little bit more flour if it's sticky. So you need to add as much flour as you need, I guess, for it not to be sticky when you knead it. So after you put the bread back in, the, in your cold oven, for the second rise for an hour. Now's the time to prepare and chop the apples. So you chop the apples into small pieces, about a quarter of an inch uh, big. Um, and then you put them in a bowl of water that has a half a teaspoon of salt and you just let them sit there until you're ready for them. When you're ready for them, basically, you um, strain the apples and then what you wanna do is dry them. So I probably use more paper towels than anybody in the world uh, when I cook. But for doing things like drying vegetables or, um, you know, for this particular recipe, drying off the, the apple slices, it works really well. So basically I just kind of get in there and kind of mush them around and make sure that the moisture is gone. One of the things you have to be very careful about in this recipe is that you don't have extra moisture with the apples because if you do, it's going to make the dough soggy and it's going to be very difficult to make those uh, strands of deliciousness with the apples in them. Anyway, so what we're going to do with our apples once they're strained is we're going to add that two and a half, uh, that half cup of sugar. And I put uh, half a teaspoon of cinnamon in here because I like the cinnamon sugar flavor. You don't have to do that. You can just uh, sugar the apples. So we put this in here and we mix them up. And now comes the fun part. So here is our challah dough, which is nice and soft and pliable. So what we're gonna do and okay, there's a disclaimer right here is I am not the best hollow braider in the world. So know that going forward. So you take your bread and divide it in half. If I were really doing this the right way, my compulsive normal way, I would probably weigh it and then cut it in half. But this is more an art rather than a science at the moment. So you take half of your dough and you just put it to the side. You can put it back in, in the original bowl that it was in. And then you take your other piece of challah and you divide it into fours, okay? So you might wanna kind of smooth it out so it's a little bit of a rectangle. So you divide it into fours that are relatively the same size. It's one, two. Another thing that you can do too, if you'd like, you can either flour 
the side of your um, scraper and the scraper is like the perfect thing to make the cuts versus using a knife. And there are our four pieces of challah. So what you do with your first strand, make sure you incorporate the little bit you've added to it. What you do with your first strand is you stretch it up to about 12 inches long and then um, try to make sure that the consistency is pretty even. I actually like to use a rolling pin. You don't have to do this, but I don't. I find I don't do this stretchy thing very well to, with just my hands. So use a rolling pin, roll it out a bit. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take about one eighth of this apple mixture and put it right down the center of the strand. Don't have to do a lot, you don't want a lot. Just want enough to have the apples. And you can see now why the apples have to be chopped small. So once those are chopped, then you turn it over and seal the apples in there. You want to leave about a half an inch on either side. And then what you're going to do very carefully is kind of start from the middle and roll. And again, you need to have a well-floured surface for this. And roll your strand. And if any of the apples are peeking through or are there any seams, you want to make sure that you close those. So this is going to be the beginning of our braid our first braid, but again, I've got like a couple of little outcroppings of apple. So there's our first little strand. All right, now that you have your four strands, we're gonna start braiding. So what we do is we take one strand and towards the middle, we don't wanna leave a whole lot of uh, room in the middle. You take one strand, put it up and then under, and then over here we do just the opposite. And again, braiding is not my forte, so I'm sure there are those of you who are much better braiders out there than I am. So what you do is you take this end over here, this end over here. I already didn't have them close enough. So this end goes over here, this end goes over here, and you just make sure that the strands are interwoven, right? So this one, this one can go over this way this goes over this way and that goes over that so basically what you're going to do is an over and under kind of thing so that when you finish <laughs> and i cheated i know you'll have a nicely braided loaf that looks like this so again you want to make sure that um, your strands are tucked in under nicely you want to make sure that there are no apples poking out. And then this is going to sit for about a half an hour. And while you're doing this, you turn on your oven to 350, um, make your other loaf. And then after this has risen to the point where you can touch it and it bounces back, what you're going to do is you're going to brush it with your egg wash and your egg wash is basically just one egg, uh, one tablespoon of water and um, I think it's a little bit of salt. And we're going to brush it. And also, uh, I bake this on parchment paper. I like to use parchment paper when baking because, first of all, things don't stick to it. And um, secondly, it just helps uh, basically 
get the bread off of the, the baking sheet easier. And you don't have to use any extra oil or any extra anything to grease your baking sheet or baking pan. Okay, so we do that. And then if you want to decorate, you can use some of this torbinado sugar. This torbinado sugar is a decorative sugar. It's very coarsely ground. It's really quite pretty. So I like to sprinkle some around on the bread. Make sure that you don't accidentally get your kosher salt, kosher salt out because they sort of kind of look alike. Um, anyway, the recipe calls for one tablespoon per each loaf. That's a lot to me, but again, you can do this to taste. All right, so let's pretend that this has been rising for about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. It's perfect. It's ready to go in the oven. So it goes in the oven. What is suggested is you cook it for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, take it out, brush it with some more of your egg wash, and then turn the bread around so that the bread will bake evenly. The back side of the oven tends to be hotter and bake hotter than the front. So if halfway through baking, you turn it around, brush it with some more of your egg wash, Cook for another 20 minutes, and then you can test for doneness. Um, you can do this by knocking on the bread, which I do, um, or you can stick a thermometer in it, whatever you prefer. So we're gonna stick our bread in the oven. Voila! And here is the finished product, a beautiful, brown, looks like it's braided, uh, loaf of challah for your Rosh Hashanah meal. So to all of you, Lashana Tova, I hope you have a very sweet year and thank you for watching. <laughs>